Hey everyone, Rob from Southgate Media Group here. Before we get started with this podcast, we have a quick message. If this is your first time checking out the show, we love that you found us and we really hope you enjoy it. What we have to say is for the subscribers. If you enjoy our shows, would you please donate to help keep these going? We don't want to have to put traditional ads on these shows, but this does cost money. So we really do rely heavily on donations. To make a donation to the show, please go to our website, www.southgatemediagroup.com. Go to the page for the show, and in the upper right-hand corner is a donate button. It takes you right to PayPal, and you can donate whatever amount you want. Thanks a lot for listening, everybody. And now, on with the show. have tons of news to talk about so ricky master of the theory crafting <laughs> okay so the first stop we have is that titan comics are going to pre- create a five-part series uh, around about october time and they've just released a picture well just they've released a picture with the title of the first one which seems to be called heroes vengeance it also has the picture of a lucha libre type of mask on the front cover there's nothing much really else been said. It just says that it's going to bridge the gap, which I believe the webisodes are doing as well. So, yeah. Hmm. Yes. Okay, so next up we have San Diego Comic Con, which is going on next week. But by the time this comes out, it will be about two weeks later. But anyway, what we know about uh, San Diego is that Heroes is going to have a gallery full of photos and props from the original series that attendees can tour Plus, there will be a 4D interactive experience in which fans will be able to use pyrokinetic abilities to escape a dangerous situation. And they will also have a panel in Hall H on Sunday, moderated by Greg Grunberg. You're going to San Diego, aren't you? Yeah, but um, unfortunately, I am obligated to uh, spend all my time doing DC stuff that happens Superhero Saturday. Yeah, that's fine. It's like Arrow, Captain Flash, and stuff like that. Yeah, cool. And Supergirl, so... Next up, we have some... Casting news, Uh, the first and biggest is Angela Petrelli, Kristen Rose is returning. Yay, Mama Petrelli. (laughs) And also someone from Degrassi Jr. Hi, Um, Aslin Paul is Aislin. I don't know how you pronounce it, but she's Aslin's going to be joining as well in a recurring role. I think it's a little late, so I don't think she's going to be in that many episodes, but... We will yeah, see. she's billed as a guest star. Yeah, so we should. Less than three episodes. Yeah. Next up, we actually have more importantly, we have a release slash premiere date for Heroes Reborn, which is going to be Thursday, September twenty fourth, which has rushed this podcast into overdrive. Yeah, overdrive. So yeah, basically... it's, it's eight. It's at eight o'clock. It's a self starter. I'm a yes. little bit worried about that because yeah. you know NBC has been building up their Thursdays. And I would have thought that they would have put Blacklist at eight and have that as the lead in for Heroes. Mm. But they, I think they're hoping that the Heroes audience will try and find it. But you know, their goodwill may have been. There's nothing on it. Wait, exactly. are they going up against the Big Bang Theory? They are going up against the Big Bang Theory. <sighs> yes. Uh, Good luck to you. Next up, we have two trailers. The first one was subtitled "Where Are All the Heroes," and that felt when I first watched that I was kind of excited, but there wasn't any new footage of anything. It just seemed like stock footage, which they had superimposed "Where Are All the Heroes" in numerous languages all over the place. My friend, who's Venezuelan, watched it with me as well and got a bit angry that they used some of the Venezuela's type riot things as one of the <laughs> as one of the scenes. So yeah. What did you think about that first trailer? I was like, dude, where's the real trailer? That's what I kept thinking about. Myself. I know. And I'm like, is this like a bit of time ad? What <laughs> is this? It felt a bit uh pretentious, like something that one of my one of my friends would have made the whole time through. I was still excited though, because it kind of it kind of sets the scene of what's happened, like what I think is going to happen, which is that all the heroes have been in hiding, but they're needed, but none of them are coming out because they're scared of something happening. So yes, yep. the next trailer happened, dropped, and it was subtitled "The Extraordinary Among Us," 
and it was a mixture of the original trailer plus stuff dropped into it. We get scenes of Carlos or Ryan Guzman delivering a speech to a room full of children and we get we got footage we got like if you like pause certain stuff you can kind of see stuff so you've got hrg returning and him being paired with this guy quentin frady who is played by henry zabrowski you also get footage of what i believe is gatling green and robbie k in a room together and he says the famous peter line from the first series we have miko otomo or sorry kiki suzane who just is destroying people with her kung fu skills and that sword i know right um you've got a mysterious man in black jumping from place from place to place and beating up people um my theory is that that is ryan guzman dressed in the hero vigilante kind of thing it kind of makes sense because his character is a former soldier you also see someone and they're building yeah. him up as a different kind of hero. Yes, which I take as like an anti-hero. Yes, so. exactly. Also, you've got someone flying in the air. I thought at first that that might be Ryan Guzman because they, he's surrounded by soldiers at that point, but that could just be someone else. And someone on on a on our emails was saying it could it looks like the hair kind of looks like Toru Uchikado, so maybe it's him. Who knows? You also have someone using telekinetic powers against someone else it's a you don't see who it is you just see the back and you don't even see who he's using the powers on you see someone screaming and i don't know whether that's you know like how they did with siler and they gave him the cool tone with his voice at times i don't know if they did that same effect with her because she's got a power or just added it because she's cool you see the aurora again and someone controlling it i've got theories on that what did you think about it it's a lot going on though yeah. I like it. It was more kinetic. Yeah. And they only released it because the fans demanded it. Oh, yeah. But... Like, <laughs> they weren't going to do it. Then everybody kept... Then they had, like, some weird thing on... What, what what magazine was that? Where they were, like... They had to have, like, a vote, and that's what finally made them release the footage or whatever. Okay. Like, IGN or something. But I tweeted at uh, one of the IGN guys, the guy who wrote the... The breakdown. The breakdown. He saw, it, he saw it. And he said that that's not the one that was shown at the upfronts. So, yeah. The upfront one's still to come. I think that a lot of stuff's going to be shown at San Diego. So with that trailer also came an official synopsis. Links to everything in this episode will be put on the synopsis of this actual episode. So the only things I'm going to bring up from the synopsis are a year ago, a terrorist attack in Odessa, Texas left the city decimated. Blamed for the tragic events, those with extraordinary abilities are in hiding or are on the run from those with nefarious motives. So I'm wondering whether or not this is going to actually be set in present time or if they're going to carry it straight on from Heroes and move forward to the future. Do you know what I'm saying? So I don't, I like, if it's going to be set in what? 2011. 2011. So I don't know whether it's like the series is going to be set in 2011 and they're going to flash forward to like 20. 20- no, I think it's set in 2014, and then okay. we, then because it's a year that passed, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then we come to the present. Fair enough. Cool. Two vigilantes include Luke and Joanne. Noah Bennett has gone off the grid, but conspiracy theorist Quentin Frady finds him and opens his eyes to the truth behind the Odessa tragedy. I think that uh, in the IGN upfront trailer, they had someone had sent HRG his uh, horn rim glasses. I think that's what Quentin Frady's going to be doing. I also think Quentin Frady's going to be a human and he's going to yeah. try and he's trying to uncover what happened at Odessa, which I think leads us to believe that it wasn't actually a special who created something that happened at Odessa. I think it's going to be another company type thing who created it to try and put the world together. Yeah, much like season one. I think that that brings us to the character of um, Erica, which is played by R- Raya Kilstead. Yeah. Um, because she's the head of the tech conglomerate Renatuas or whatever. Yeah. You know, Renatus. I don't know. I can't yeah, yeah. Renatus. Yeah, I can't wait to hear them pronounce. That <laughs> Also, while in hiding, some are discovering their new found powers. Awkward teen Tommy just wants to be normal. And when the girl of his dreams, Emily, um, that's Tommy, Robbie Kay and Emily Gatlin Green. But normalcy is virtually impossible after learning of a new ability that terrifies him. Coming from a very sheltered upbringing, a bold and ethereal teenager, Melina, uh, played by Danica Yarush, has 
been told she is destined for greatness. In Tokyo, a quiet and unique young woman, Miko, is trying to track down her missing father while hiding an extraordinary secret that makes her a force to be reckoned with. Elsewhere, a new type of a different type of hero is emerging through former soldier Carlos. So they they're gonna cross paths with assorted heroes from the past. Oh, you left out Miko because she's a she's a, a girl that is looking for a missing father. I, did I, say I was that. like, wouldn't it be funny? Oh, did you? I'm but like, wouldn't it be I'm funny like, if her father was Hiro Nakamura? Yes. yes, that's what I was thinking. Like, he hid her away because, listen, his, his sister's name is Kimiko, right? Yeah. And then, like, Miko could be, like, a shortened name for it. Yeah. And he's like, well, you know, he went into the future, saw that, you know, they were going to have this problem. So he, like, basically pulled, uh, you know, well, not a silo. Yeah, yeah. Silent moment, but he sends her to be adopted. Yeah. To keep her safe or whatever. Yeah. And she discovers that and goes looking for it. I think that would be cool. That would be a cool way to bring Hero into the story. Yes, especially future Hero. But yeah, um, that's just theory crafting at the moment. Yeah. Next up, um, we'll, we'll talk more about this as we go on, but I'm sure like theories will come up as we carry on. There is also loads of motion posters. Like, what's the difference between a motion poster and a GIF? Um, other than the fact that it downloads as an MP4. I think... I the hell out. I don't know, like, they, these motion posters have got, like, vid- like music on them as well, don't they? And I think it's really strange that all of them have music, um, but Molina's has the, uh, like, Danica's has the original, like, Wendy and Lin- Lisa music on it. The rest of them are done by, uh, I think it's Audio Machine, two songs. I've put them up on our Twitter, so you can find them there. So, on these motion posters... I like everybody's tagline. Yes, though. the... Cool. The taglines we have are Sacrifice What You Must, which is for Francesca Eastwood's Molly's characters. What do you think about Molly? Do you think everyone's thinking that Molly is Molly Walker, Francesca Eastwood? No, because she doesn't. They've explicitly said that she doesn't have powers. Uh, Okay. Next up, we have Embrace Who You Are, who is Carlos slash Ryan Guzman's. We have Forget What You Know, which is HRG's. Um, We have Save Who You Can, who is Melina's, uh, Danica's. Um, you have Unleash What You Are, which is Tommy slash Robbie Kays. You have Hunt What You Hate, which is Joanne's, Judith Sacconi. You have Protect Who You Love, who is Miko Otomo slash Kiki's. You have Avenge What You Lost, which is Luke Collins slash Zachary Levi. You have Defend What Is Right, which is Emily slash Gatlin Greens. You have Take What You Need, which is Erica slash Ryan Killsdead. And you have Expose What They Did, which is Quentin Frady slash... Henry Zabrowski. So yes, I really do think that, especially from the description of uh, Melina, who is what uh, bold and ethereal. I really and that she's destined for greatness. I really do think that she's got the power to control the Aurora. I think she's the one who HRG has been seeing. Like in the Aurora, that's who HRG and Zach Levi are watching. Yeah, even in her poster, it kind of looks like that. Too. Yeah, and I think that. The eclipse. I think the aurora is the new way of activating powers because that's why you would be destined. Well, if it's just if she, if she can control celestial, yeah. things, like we were kind of saying the last time, then yeah. And also, they said that something's happening to the universe. I think I don't know, but yeah, who knows? If they bring I think aliens that's into a little it, walk to get into. If they bring aliens <laughs> in, then I will be very disappointed. Uh, <laughs> we also know through Twitter. I asked. I was basically talking on our Primatech files with a. Uh, Raya Kilstead, and she gave us the full name of her character, which is Erica Kravitz. So yes, we got that little tidbit. Okay, so little bits that I have noticed or am thinking about. So in like the one of the Canadian upfronts, it had Tommy, who is Ro- Robbie Kay, holding on to Zachary Levi, and Zachary Levi teleported out. So I don't know if that's Robbie Kay used his power to teleport him away, or if. Zachary Levi has the power of teleporting. What I think is that Robbie K kind of has a power to teleport things away because from the description of Zachary Levi, he is a human. That's what I'm led to believe because something happened in the Battle of Odessa, is which was what I'm calling it, and something happened and he's basically been on a tear and hunting down these specials. See, I disagree. I think he's the new Nathan. Do you? I think he's a self-loathing special. Okay. You gotta have a Nathan character, right? Yeah. But maybe that's what they're going with Carlos. Mm. And also, I didn't know who this girl screaming in the chair was. I didn't know if that was Francesca Eastwood or if it was Melina, but I couldn't pause it. Like to, I don't know either of them well enough to 
see from a pause picture. And so, yeah. Next up, we have... Uh, there was a Collider interview with Zachary Levi where he was talking about Heroes Reborn and a lot of the stuff that's coming up. The only things that I can really say are... He was obviously on Chuck and his fan base is very sci-fi, fantasy genre heavy. This is stuff that he said. I'm just kind of quoting it as best I can just by going through some of it. He always watched Heroes and he was a little envious of the sandbox they got to play in. The reason why he seemed to have taken the, the role as Luke Collins in Heroes Reborn is because they know it's only going to be a 13 episode season. That's a bummer for him to say that. I know. You know? But he, he can't get successful and they can spin it off. I know, but yeah, no, he just he says something along the lines of, you know, you're giving away six or seven years of your life to this and that's what could possibly happen and it kind of the mini series is lean and mean and it only takes out five months and you know it's something that he's kind of always wanted to do he's always wanted to be in here he's liked heroes he's watched heroes and you know it's i think it's kind of cool that he's in it but yes um he also knew that he wanted to get away from, he wanted to make a different character from chuck so he talked to tim about it and they came up with the luke collins kind of character together a torture, he describes him as a tortured guy. There's a lot of darkness and sadness there. It's grittier, dirtier, and darker. He wants to challenge himself as an actor and challenge people's perceptions of what he does. So, yes. He says that they're going to be shooting Heroes Reborn still until September. And he wow. says that when the question is asked about, do you reckon there'll be future seasons? He says he hasn't, read, he hasn't even read up to the end of the miniseries yet, so he doesn't know how it's going to end. They're calling it a season, single season miniseries, but it's sure that there was a conversation above him about whether it will be anthology, anthological, like American Horror Story. But he thinks that will be cool, but he obviously doesn't know what's going to happen to his character. Yeah. He just hopes that the original heroes characters are satisfied with what's going on and that they can grab some new characters in the meantime, like new characters, new fans in the meantime. And he also says that, you know, it's something that you can sit down having and watch as a complete newbie to the Heroes universe. But also, you know, it's that kind of thing that, you know, they'll make references to other stuff that the Heroes fans will like, hoping that people who are watching it for the first time will go back and watch the original series, especially in the world of, like, binge-watching and Netflix and all that kind of stuff. It will help out. So, yeah. yeah that's cool. Next up, we have a... So, there was a post there wasn't a post but there was an article in the in entertainment weekly i don't know if it was online or if it was just on the magazine but here's some of the stuff that i picked out from the article so no one knew about heroes reborn when it when it was coming back like none of the original cast like literally they made the teaser the day that tim kring signed the deal so like the original teaser taylor which was just heroes reborn not the aurora one the original one that came out at the winter olympics also in this, it says that HRG is living in isolation when Quentin brings him info on the terrorist attack. So I'm asking myself, was it really, um, I know how much you hate this world, but, word, but Evo's who did it. No, Noah's story is what takes you through to the big plot of the series. Luke's child died in the terrorist attack is what, we, uh, what it says in this Entertainment Weekly article. And he's also on the hunt with his wife. So I'm going to be calling Judith Sacconi, Joanne Collins from now on because I believe that they're going to be married. Sunil said that characters that are coming back were specifically chosen. They fit story-wise with what the writers are doing. Um, that's what he said. And also... Well, Hendra makes a lot of sense, though. Yeah. Uh, especially because, you know, how in the original series, how they changed little things, but at the end of the day, a lot of the main plot points that were predicted in season one actually kind of sort of happened. Exactly. No yeah. matter what they did. Yeah. So. And also, Mahinder apparently makes a discovery that plays a key role in the series. Cure! 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 Who knows? Who knows? From a little blurb, it says HRG is missing memories, so we all know how that can happen. Hey, shit! Sure. Yeah. <laughs> apparently, they're not fighting for a budget. Uh, NBC was pi like was really impressed with what they put together for the pilot and threw more money at it to make it even better. So, obviously, they they've got a lot of faith in at least the pilot, and you know they kind of want to bump it bump it up because of what it's against. So yeah, that's, that's good to know. So yes, that's all I have. Do you have any theories on what's going to happen? Like I said, I just really hope Miko actually turns out to be hero Nakamura's long lost son. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's the only thing that I want to happen, and I want to see like I don't know. I want Micah to be the big bad. I, really <laughs> I know he's like only a guest star, which means three or less episodes or whatever. But, but he I can think that like if it's only like the last three exactly. episodes. 
Especially how Lindemann, Lindemann was like a guest star for like three or four episodes as well. And he was like essentially kind of the big bad, wasn't he? So it could happen. Yeah. I'm really excited for these webisodes and graphic novels. Though. I think that's going to really where we're going to see what is really going to be what. I think that's that stuff's like, I think the webisodes are going to lead us into Heroes Reborn. But I think the comics are going to lead us, like bridge the gap between the end of season four and the webisodes. That's what I'm hoping anyway, because I kind of want to know what happened to everyone in in between that time. And do you reckon that around about episode eight, they'll have that kind of four years ago kind of episode, that flashback episode that they love so much? You know what? If they don't, I'll be disappointed. <laughs> it's got to be around about episode like, eight or five, right? Yeah. I mean, they could go as soon as episode four because it is a 13 episode season. Mm. But I think they should kind of stick around to the traditional timeline. Yeah. Maybe that's the only episode that has all these people returning in. (laughs) That would be such a bummer. (laughs) But it would make sense, honestly, Mm. to get it all done in one go. Yeah. We shall see. That is all the news I have. So we're going to move on to shameless plugs and self-promotion. Well guys can find the podcast on itunes if you're still itunes users look up just search for primal tech files be sure to rate review and subscribe to us and please remember to download the episode because streaming does not count in the great algorithm of things while you're there please be sure to type in southgate media group to see all the hot and trending episodes that our podcast network is put pumping out and if you're interested in even more Southgate Media Group podcast, you can head over to southgatemediagroup.com where you can find the list, the full list of A5 Plus podcasts, and we also have weekly blogs, and you can find out tons of information about all the hosts from your favorite Southgate Media Group podcast. As for me, you can find me on Twitter at Lil Talfire. If you are on Tumblr, don't be afraid to hit the follow button, because I do follow that. It's littletalfire.tumblr.com. And please be sure to check out my blog if you are either a pop culture junkie and or a comic book fanatic. You can find me at littlepopcultureVulture.blogspot.com. Cool. So we've just done everything that we know about Heroes Reborn upcoming. So if you have any thoughts on Heroes Reborn or any theories that you want to send to us, just email us at primatechfiles at gmail.com. As Lith said, you can find us on iTunes. You can also find us on Stitcher. Just search the word Primatech Files. You can uh, bookmark our Lipsyn, primatechfiles.lipsyn.com, or fave Southgate Media Group on SoundCloud. Those are all the ways to listen to our podcast. You can find us also on Tumblr, Facebook, our Clamour, and YouTube. Just search the word Primatech Files. And also our Twitter, at Primatech Files. You can find me at quamagazine.com, thepeoplesmovies.com, but mainly at tvbinges.com for all your binge-watching needs and to help create your own TV binge. You can follow me on Twitter at RickyJDS, R-I-C-K-Y-J-D-I-A-Z, or Z if you're American. Do you want to hit them with it? Okay. Do you want to say the